Hi, I'm Bruce Holland Rogers, and since a big part of this pitch is convincing you that I'm a pretty good writer, I'd like to read you a very short story, less than a page, called Dinosaur. When he was very young, he waved his arms, gnashed the teeth of his massive jaws, and tromped around the house so that the dishes trembled in the china cabinet. Oh, for goodness sake, his mother said, you are not a dinosaur, you are a human being. Since he was not a dinosaur, he thought he might be a pirate. Seriously, his father said at some point, what do you want to be? A fireman, then, or a policeman, or a soldier, some kind of hero. But in high school they gave him tests and told him he was very good with numbers. Perhaps he would like to be a math teacher. That was respectable. Or a tax accountant. He could make a lot of money doing that. It seemed a good idea to make money, what with falling in love and thinking about raising a family. So he was a tax accountant, even though he sometimes regretted that it made him, well, small. He felt even smaller when he was no longer a tax accountant, but a retired tax accountant. Still worse, a retired tax accountant who forgot things. He forgot to take the garbage to the curb. He forgot to take his pill, forgot to turn his hearing aid back on. Every day it seemed he had forgotten more things, important things, like which of his children lived in San Francisco and which of his children were married or divorced. Then one day, when he was out for a walk by the lake, he forgot what his mother had told him. He forgot he was not a dinosaur. He stood blinking his dinosaur eyes in the bright sunlight, feeling the familiar warmth on his dinosaur skin, watching dragonflies flitting among the horsetails at the water's edge. Well, in the interest of keeping this presentation short, I want to just tell you that I have a collection of 49 stories consisting of seven sets of seven stories each that I will be publishing soon as an ebook. In fact, it may already be out as an ebook by the time you are watching this video. But I also want to bring it out as a dead tree artifact. And I'm hoping that I can get enough sponsors to help me to do that as a print on demand book. So as you can see, there are rewards that in involve getting either a PDF of the existing 49 uh, story collection as an ebook or else uh, higher rewards, getting a copy of the print book with those 49 stories, plus some after stories that will be generated to celebrate the social character of fundraising on Kickstarter. And I won't go into exactly what each of those entails, but I do want to show you the pens that are involved. If you uh, help to contribute three words that become a story, then this is one of the pens that you would get. It's a nice little fountain pen. You'll also get the uh, manuscript um, that I uh, hand write the uh, first draft or an early draft of that story on. Uh, so you'll get that. Uh, there's a higher level that mentions the Italian pen. This is a 1950s vintage fountain pen made in Italy. It has never been used. I bought it as part of a lot of pens that were found in a warehouse had been stored since the 1950s, along with their still pristine promotional materials. The perfect gift for him, for her. You'd expect to pay 10 to $15. It's only 350 That is, of course, in 1950s dollars. You'd expect to pay a little bit more these days. I am hoping that through getting the book out and by bringing more of my collections out that I can help to bring new subscribers to shortshortshort.com, which is a website that is the um, storefront for my email story subscription service, where for $10, subscribers get a year of short, short stories fresh off of the keyboard, three stories a month, 36 stories for that $10. And at the high water mark, I had 1,000 subscribers. I got busy with other things for a while and distracted by some life issues, and my subscriptions have fallen uh, under 500. I'd like to get back to 1,000 and eventually to 2,000, which is where I would be sustaining my writing career um, through my writing again. So helping me with this book is also helping me with that project as well. You're helping to uh, increase uh, reader awareness and hopefully help me to get up to that subscriber mark of 2,000 subscribers again. So I hope you will help, and I want to sign off 
by reading you a story about the character of Donabo Bay, who is featured also in some of the rewards. For those of you who have never encountered Donabo Bay, the imaginative Montreal poet. Donabo Bay's Halloween. Donabo Bay invited me to his home for the night of Halloween. I came as a pirate, a costume which I had assembled out of a bandana and the cardboard spool from a roll of paper towels. I tied the bandana on my head. Before I stuck the cardboard tube into my belt, I wrote on it with bold, piratical letters, wooden sword. I considered whether or not to write on my face with a black marker the words, false beard. I decided against it. I had work the next day and the ink might not come off. I arrived a little after the appointed hour. I knocked on the poet's door, expecting the party would already be underway. To my surprise, when Dona opened the door to his rooms, he was entirely alone. Am I the first? I said. He looked puzzled. The first? Then he saw my sword. Ah, no, I should have explained myself, he said. This is no party for the grown-ups. For me, Halloween is an affair entirely for the children. I meant only that you might come and help me with the candy. Oh, and you have gone to the trouble of making a costume, a very fine one, too. You can tell what I am, then. My friend, do you think I do not have eyes in my head? But one moment. There were colored pens on his dining table and small squares of paper, many with writing and drawing on them. He took up a blank piece and wrote on it in red, Scarlet Macaw. He pinned the bird to my shoulder. There. Thank you, I said. That pulls it all together, I think, said Donat. And what sort of candy will we be giving the children? I'm afraid that I have eaten it all, Dona confessed. There is nothing to give them but the wrappers. He picked up three of the squares of paper and gave them to me. The first, with the red and yellow design, said sugar bomb, ingredients, raw sugar, corn syrup, maltose, dextrose, fructose, sucrose, brown sugar, gunpowder, bang! The second, with a blue moon and white stars on a black background, was called space dust, ingredients, Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, sulfur may contain traces of the rings of Saturn. The third candy wrapper was for dead poet yummy. Ingredients, spun sugar and air. Some of the air in this candy was once breathed by Jean Genet. Swallow it whole and then write a poem about stealing, you little thief. But, I said, aren't the children disappointed? Ah, the children, said Donabo Bay, they never come. I hope you'll help me with this publishing project. Thanks very much.